Yes, Zara's yes. father, he was here on this scene. We cannot confirm that anyone has seen Zara within the last month. Zara is hearing impaired and she has a prosthetic leg. She's 10 years old, she's scared. We have a high degree of faith that law enforcement is going to solve this case. Police say Zara's stepmom has not been truthful. Inconsistencies developed over the course of this investigation has not eliminated her as a person of interest. This outcome will not be positive. Talking about the stepmother's lies, they include that she has had many, many illnesses, brain cancer three times, when in fact it's her stepdaughter that's had cancer, and that she writes songs for the American Idol contestant, Chris Daughtry. Uh, you know, it's not over, home, feels like tonight. I'm referring to the American Idol contestant, Chris Daughtry, that the stepmom says that she has written songs for. Out to the sister, Carrie Fairchild, joining us. Did she tell you that, too, that she writes songs for Chris Daughtry? No, I've never heard that one. Yeah, we, we've heard a lot. Carrie Fairchild is with us. This is the stepmom's younger sister. You know, Jeff Gardier, Dr. Jeff, psychologist, host of VH1's Dad Camp, what do you make of the stepmom? Sounds like the stepmom is not just a pathological liar, but uh, appears to have a borderline personality. In other words, yeah, a person... Jeff, have you ever, ever come on the show and not accuse somebody of a borderline personality complex this, disorder? This woman does have borderline personality, Nancy. Yes, she no, has, that was a yes, no question. The, the answer is yes, but she has all the classic symptoms. Uh, she lies. She has issues uh, or has had issues with drug abuse. She has no stable uh, relationships other than... Uh, with the father of this child, and she has been extremely abusive. She doesn't trust anyone. It also seems like she has some sort of Munchausen syndrome where she uh, is, has all these fictitious illnesses and Munchausen's by proxy where she uses her stepdaughter to get attention for illnesses that she may or may not and, even and have. And listen to this, Dr. Jeff. I'm going to go back to Carrie Fairchild. This is a stepmom's younger sister, Carrie Tell me about the incident where she had propped one of the kids up in a, a wheelchair. Just one time, uh, she we had seen her uh, put one in the wheelchair and say that she was sick with cancer, and then, of course, she never got sick or anything. Uh, she was just always doing stuff, but we never seen no physical abuse. That's the only thing. She was just bad with the lies. We never saw physical abuse. Just, I guess, Carrie, how emotion. long has it been since you saw Zara? I haven't seen her for over a year. So apparently a lot has gone on in the past year. Yes. Let me see that cell phone shot of little Zara, a 10-year-old little cancer survivor with a big black eye, Dana. Ellie, what can you tell me about this black eye Zara has? Well, we got this picture from a friend of the family. Her name's Brandy Stapleton. She says she took this picture on August 9th of this year. She said that the stepmom, she told ABC that the stepmom actually didn't want her to take the picture because of that bruise. She explained it was from her being clumsy, it was from her chemo treatments. But Brandy took the picture anyway because she was just trying to get Zara to smile. And you can see in that picture, it looks like she's got a shiner. Is it true that the friend says Zara was feeling sad and down that day? Right. And the mom was trying to do anything to cheer her up, and she thought she could get her to smile by taking a cell phone picture? Right. That's why this woman, Brandy Stapleton, wanted to take the picture. She says she thought if she could get Zara to smile for the picture, it might cheer her up a little bit. Dr. Howard Oliver, joining us out of L.A., how do you get a black eye from chemo? Uh, you can't get a black eye from chemo. It'd so have that's to be, all uh, BS. An injury. Yes, it is. Back to Natisha. Natisha Lance standing by there at the pond draining. Natisha, they are telling you they are looking for a body. Have they totally given up hope on finding Zara alive? Well, Nancy, this started out as a missing person investigation, and then it turned into a homicide investigation. They are looking for a body. Police do not believe that Zara is still alive. They have not named a suspect, but they have persons of interest. They have not ruled anybody out as a person of interest. That includes the stepmother as well as the father, and the stepmother had her first appearance in court today for an obstruction of justice charge for that fake uh, ransom note that she wrote and left on the family vehicle. 
also on the narrative of the, of the arrest affidavit, it says for reporting an abduction of her stepdaughter Zara, which leads us to believe that she may have had knowledge before she reported Zara missing that she was already deceased. Okay, wait, say that again. Natisha Lance was in court today. Let's see that footage of the stepmom in court. Tell me again what happened in court. Well, Nancy, she was let in. She had two attorneys on both sides of her. Her first attorney is from her uh, felony larceny case from another county, and the other attorney is court appointed. The judge asked her several questions, asked her if she understood the charges that are against her, also asked her if she understood that that charge carries a maximum of the 30-month sentence, asked her if she still wanted to stick with the court appointed attorney, to which she did, asked her if she had any questions, and she shook her head no. She spoke barely above a whisper, and then she was let out of the courtroom. She was in that pink jumpsuit. She had shackles on her ankles as well as around her waist, and she was also handcuffed. Now, I cannot imagine living in the home as a child where the adult is this woman, your stepmother that treats you like this, and your father sits by. Teresa in Illinois. Hi, Teresa. What's your question? Hi, Nancy. Love your show. Your tons are beautiful. Now, my question is, um, why did they wait a month to report her missing instead of reporting? reporting her missing, the, you know, the first day. I mean, John, not, John Miller, yeah. what do we know about when she went missing and when she was reported missing? She was reported missing Saturday afternoon. Uh, after her mother said the last time she saw her was Saturday morning. But nobody in the neighborhood can remember seeing Zara at all. Apparently they moved here in September of this year. Nobody in Hickory can remember seeing her as a child. didn't they report her missing 30 days ago? Obviously they didn't want to do that. Oh, God. Maybe people ask dumb questions.